the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. I'm talking to you, buddy. That's right. You know, I've been getting a lot of phone calls from people saying, how refreshing it was hearing you talking about politics the last few weeks. It was so refreshing. And I was asked today by a reporter, are you going to continue doing this? In fact, he's not the first to ask. And I told him what I'm about to tell you. Uh, We are not going to turn it into a political talk show. We're not going to talk about politics every hour of every day. This was an extraordinary election where the debates were drawing up to 80 million viewers at a time. And an Obama infomercial drew almost 34 million viewers. I mean, we haven't seen that in maybe maybe most people's lifetime who listen to this show. We had no choice but to talk about it because it was the thing everybody was talking about. It was the number one thing on everybody's mind. Now, what I uh, find interesting is here we are in the week following Election Day. And all of a sudden, what we were talking about every day, our obsessions of, you know, Barack Obama, John McCain, and Sarah Palin, and Joe the Plumber... All of a sudden, it's out of our lives. It's gone. And what are we seeing now? Obama at the White House meeting with George W. Bush. I saw Sarah Palin doing a cooking segment on a TV show. I mean, the election is gone. And you know what? There were some people out there who were so obsessed with it, so amazingly fascinated by it then I have to imagine there's a sense of loss. How many of you out there got so totally into it that you were watching, you know, like The Daily Show with Jon Stewart and you were watching CNN and you were uh, tuning into the monologues of the late night shows every night to see what they said about the candidates? Maybe you were watching Bill Maher on HBO. I mean, there are people out there who were just obsessed. Cruising through the Internet looking for information, looking at emails, what have you. And it's gone. It's gone. And I think most people, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but as I figure out what we're going to do in the future, and we're always figuring out what we're going to do in the future, there's nothing unusual here. We're always looking at what you're interested in and trying to to, to address whatever it is you want to get on the air. But I think that uh, the interest level that everybody had in Barack Obama and John McCain, the interest level in politics that existed a week ago, will completely diminish by January 21st, the day after the inauguration of Barack Obama. And I have a feeling there are people out there right now whose lives are feeling empty. You're feeling a sense of loss. What do you do with your time now? How many of you volunteered for a campaign or got involved somehow or having petitions signed or, you know, uh, getting onto uh, websites or MySpace pages or blogs, reading other people's, creating your own, flipping out about the latest thing that happened? How many of you now have nothing to talk about? I mean, honestly, I'm happy to see Barack Obama is beginning the transition. And he's at the White House with Bush. I think that's fantastic. Bush, who's been hiding under a rock for several weeks, was thrilled to see that. But I must say, it was not that interesting when you get right down to it. We're not in on that conversation. We have no idea what they're talking about, no matter what they tell us. And it's not nearly as interesting as when the candidates were sniping at each other, debating each other, calling each other names. That was good stuff. This, not as good. I mean, I have to wonder how many of you now, in the week following the election, are just as interested as you were before the election and on election night. How many of you are feeling a sense of loss? There's a void in your life. 
because the politics that you were fascinated with, the election, all the news about it, all the personalities are gone. I've got to know. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. And I want to talk to the people who feel bereft without all of the characters of the recent election. How about some of you are glad to see it's gone, too? How about you? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Rocky on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Um, football game's over. Change the channel. It's a done deal. It's done. It's done. You know, my, guy, my team didn't win, so my opinion's my opinion, and then got to see what the next game plays on to. There are some naive people out there who think that we're going to maintain the same level of interest uh, now that the election is over and Obama won. And I say most of the people who are excited about Obama never pay attention to politics, don't care about politics, and will not care about politics. Now they did this, they elected Obama, and now they're going back to their Xbox or whatever it is they do. A hundred percent. I'm a normal guy. I'm a normal person. I live in a normal town, uh, and I work. I was very interested in it. It probably captivated me more than anything, and I think it was because of the historic moments of it. Let's face it, it was a very historic election period. Um, but as far as I am a Republican, and we didn't win, so there's no need for me to keep following it. They're going to make the decisions they do. Again, I'm not really big on politics. I don't understand 90% of it, to be honest with you. Um, I just want to get up and go to work tomorrow. That's all. Right. Uh, do you feel angry about the result or bitter? Um, I I think we, uh, gosh, I don't want to, no, I'm not angry. It is what it is. The people spoke. Um, I kind of feel that. I didn't count. It didn't matter if I went to the poll or not. It was going to happen. It happened. Um, let's go back to counting every single vote. We got over 100 days to wait until somebody goes in. I think they had time to count every single one. The electoral college system, I don't know if it's correct or not correct. Uh, you know, it's a bunch of crap, to be honest. But, yeah, I'm sure people like you weren't complaining about the electoral college system when Bush beat Al Gore. I didn't. I didn't. Didn't care then, and I still don't care overall. But I'm sure you're right. People like myself that are normal people didn't, or they didn't complain. Um, it, it intrigued me. It did. I'm not going to say it didn't, but my team didn't win, so I went back to watching my normal TV shows and get up and go to work and hope there's work for me tomorrow. I'm in construction and it sucks right now. Yeah. And I'll imagine there's a lot of people, because the economy is so lousy and people are afraid of losing their jobs, or if they've lost their jobs, they're afraid about whether they're going to find another one. I right. imagine uh, they want escapism now, nah, but they knew they had to vote. They knew Dad, they had to do something because the president's going to change one way or the other. Right. And, and now they did it, they're out. Yeah. And it, it, I don't think either either candidate was going to solve our economy overnight. It's something that's going to have to take some time. Every one of these takes a long time to get back through it. I mean, yeah. 40, I went through one when I first got out of high school. We had that recession in 89 through 93, roughly, uh, before we really started getting into an upswing in the construction. And I've been in it all my life. Uh, and this one's going to take a little longer. It's going to take a little longer to get back up where we were. And hopefully we'll be more smart about it next time when we're up there. We will see. Rocky, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here we are now, the week after Election Day, and I'm wondering if you are feeling bereft, if you are feeling sad, if you feel like there's something missing from your life. There's a void now because we don't have the politics. We don't have the election anymore. Obama won, but that was exciting, and people were weeping and, and all of that, but it's done. Now, I know at the end of a baseball season or a hockey season, I know I feel that way, you know. Uh, we know who the winner is. God, I'd like to play a few more games. I'd like to go out uh, to the arena and see a few more games, but um, it's over. 
And I have to wonder how many people are out there right now who are just feeling like, oh, it's over. It's over. There's nothing to talk about. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here's Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Kevin. Tom, I've been listening to you for a long time, man, since 2001. I've learned a lot from you. I have a lot to say about what you're talking about. But first, I'd like to congratulate you on being a genius and how you handled the election. I don't know if everybody noticed that, but you are an absolute genius. And one day, I want you to write a book so that I can learn how do you do what you do. Well, thank you for that, Kevin. <laughs> well, you know, Tom, I was never interested in elections or politics because of basically the way John McCain and the Republican ran their party. That's how I knew that he was going to lose because he continued to do the same old thing, which turned people off about 15 years ago. And then I became obsessed with the Obama election. I wasn't going for Obama at first. I thought that he should let Hillary step in front, sort of make it a better chance. But once he started winning, and I saw it was a chance for him to win, I really became excited about it. And I was watching CNN, MSNBC, C-SPAN 1, C-SPAN 2, C-SPAN 3. I listened to all the, the one-point idiots on the Republican side to call in, try to make a point, and I listened to you to make them stand up like a man and made them represent themselves and it made them figure out that they didn't really know what they were talking about at all. And um, it, it was just amazing. But after election time, I became depressed. And I was trying to figure out, why am I depressed? And you, you know why, Tom? Because it's the same reason why the guy called you last week. He said, you know what, I'm hearing all these black people say, it's my time, that it's our time. Yes, yeah, our time. But I think what they mean by that is for people like Obama, who's been pushing the rope, who's been pushing the envelope, um, Jesse Jackson, um, Oprah Rampy, now it's time for them to reach more, and all the people who's going to college and actually taking that step forward to be something like you teach people every day. But if you're a loser, it ain't your time. See, so I woke up and realized that I was still going to be a loser, no matter what, unless I get in school and really push the envelope to educate myself and start attacking my education from a power position. Always a good idea, Kevin. It's Ted on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Hey, um, this, interesting topic for me because um, I am I am a Republican conservative, but, you know, voted for Bush both times, and um, I'm embarrassed to say so. Uh, but I just felt like it was time for a change, you know? And um, although I don't view myself as a liberal, I think the Republicans have done a hell of a job um, screwing up the, uh, you know, Congress. And um, I just felt like uh, Obama was uh, was the right choice. And how do you feel a week later? I'm sorry, say that again. The question here is how you feel now that it's all over. I mean, are are you uh, interested like you were? Have, have you gone back to your life now? What's the deal? Oh yeah, I, I, absolutely. I'm I'm eager, uh, like most citizens, to um, see what kind of change is ha going to happen. I mean, it, it, really, there's only one way we can go, and that's up. And uh, I think we've hit a lot of milestones by electing uh, Obama. And um, you know, I, I I think we have good things in front of us. Hey, Tom, can yeah, you yeah, yeah, but you understand, we're not going to even see Obama as the president now for another seven weeks or so, eight weeks. Yeah, we we got a lot of time to uh, get ourselves prepared for a uh, better economy, don't we? Uh, my prediction is that the average person who was very excited about Barack Obama and this election is no longer excited about it. It's done. Yeah, right. You're you're exactly right. Um, and I I I I think, and this is totally off in left field here, but with uh, Proposition Eight as well, um, I think that's just going to go on and go on until it actually changes. Well, we'll see if that's true. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Randy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. I just wanted to say that uh, I'm kind of sad now that the uh, parties, the political parties over. Uh, we did have political parties at different friends' house. I'm um, talking about with uh, chips, dips, uh, get out the vote message, phone calls, uh, friends, rallies. Uh, I thought it was a great, uh, a great time in America, one of the best times in America when you're getting close to electing an official uh, like president, and uh, you get together with all these people, pe you know, people from the community, people that you uh, just met, 
and just have a great time just trying to get out the vote. And now that it's over, I mean, it, you know, kind of sucks, and we're trying to look forward to the next four years, uh, the next time we can put uh, put on a show, put on a party for a candidate, and uh, get, you know, get the vote out there. And uh, now, uh, are you as interested as you were before? Uh, you know, I'm always, I, I can, I'm not, to me, I consider myself a moderate Republican. Uh, I was sad that uh, McCain lost and that Obama won. I believe he's going to, you know, head our country in the wrong direction. And, uh, you know, experience-wise, military-wise, I mean, he's just got no experience and no no portfolio. Like, uh, I mean, you know, you wouldn't hire this guy to uh, run your company, you know. You, you wouldn't hire him uh, to, to run Lankins Incorporated, uh, you know, 300 days. Oh, uh, that's uh, generally uh, what we do. That's generally what we do. We pay the we pay the kid to mow the lawn, and we go off and do something else. Yeah, well, very true, very true. I mean, but uh, again, you know, like your topic was saying, yeah, I am sad, uh, but life goes on, and you know, we're looking forward to the next four years where we can get a Republican in office and get the, you know, everybody's going to see that this was just a sham, that it was smoke and mirrors, and when it's all said and done, uh, everybody's going to wish John McCain was our president. And um, <laughs> I'm sure when it's, hang on I'm a second, sure. Eric, do you agree with what Randy is saying there? Eric? Hello? Uh, no, I don't. Tell them why. Uh, well, one of the problems I find with this whole election fiasco is Obama had a similar message as Kerry and Clinton, and many people supported them. And the only reason why we're disgruntled now is because Obama happens to be black. No one's talking about the huge following that Clinton and Kerry had. But these people who are talking now, who are saying that we're and we're going to be in such a disastrous state, haven't looked at the current economic system. They're only looking at Obama being a black person. These people are not rational in their thought at all. They're limited because of their, their intolerance to color. And it's I'm really a sad thing. Let, let me say this. Uh, I'm not speaking on Obama's color. You know, the fact that he's African-American has nothing to do with the fact that he's got no experience. I mean, even Alan Keyes is a great Republican. So is uh, Colin Powell. Uh, so is Condoleezza Rice. I mean, these are all African-Americans who do follow the Republican Party. And um, I would say that any one of them would be more qualified to lead than Obama. The only well, reason listen, why where has Bush taken us? Where has Bush taken us? He has tripled the national debt. So Obama can do what? Obama can do what? Bush has experience. And look where he's gotten us in. No, very, very true. I wouldn't say Bush has, has been a great president, but uh, I do believe but that he's party... white. But he's white. So, so yeah. that certainly makes it much better. Well, no, well, I'm just saying that he did have a little bit... You didn't disagree with me, though. You didn't disagree no. with me. Yeah, no, but, 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 right. know, but race has nothing to do with it. Again, but, I mean, but, you, you, but you haven't made an intelligent reason why you believe Obama uh, would be worse off, or we would be worse off as Obama being president, because you can't say that, well, Bush did a few things, okay, what, with the housing problem and the economy? No, 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 definitely. Katrina was definitely a bad mark on Bush's uh, record. Listen, uh, more than just Katrina. It's more than just Katrina. I know, you know, know, I'm just saying that uh, there's, 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 there's a long line of things that the guy did, definitely did do wrong, but he's not the only guy in the Republican Party. I mean, we have John McCain, we had Mitt Romney, we had, uh, there's a host of other, uh, bunch of other guys that could have ran the country a lot better. Uh, McCain, but I'm was, McCain was mirroring Bush. McCain was mirroring Bush. And it, it is, and Tom, it is, it is just, an egregious act that so many quiet racists get on the radio, and you point them out. You point them out in a very classic way. That's why I respect you a great deal for what you do, because you're neutral. If something's not right, you point it out. But these quiet racists that get on and say, well, Obama, give him a few more years. Let McCain get in. McCain was going to do the same thing Bush has done, and that's destroy this country, destroy the image around the world that people have. And this idiot Palin that he got on the Gloria Steinem said, does this, and Barbara Streisand said, does this guy think we're an idiot? Does he think that women are that stupid where we can just look at the image 
and just gravitate towards a person. Can I, can I say this? Berlin had no had very little experience, just like Obama. But you got to remember, she ran the biggest state right. in the union. She, right. she ran She's the right. biggest state in the She's union. Right. She also was voted the best governor in the entire United States. That's all fifty states and all fifty governors. She was voted the best governor, and uh, I think she would have made a, a good commander in chief had she had just a little bit more time on the job and a little bit more experience. Again, this isn't about. White people are saying Palin would not have made a good governor in chief. I'm not even talking about African Americans. We're not going to even get in that area of us judging her. You, look at Caucasians, what they're saying about her. Uh, well, like I said, give Obama some time, and you're going to see that it's all smoke and mirrors. That the Listen. man was just an eloquent speaker, and that it's going to it's going to lead our country right into a disastrous. Uh, Why uh, is he an eloquent party speaker? Way. Thank you. Anyone Thank else, you, Tom, anyone for your else time. that has this kind of education <laughs> would be great. You're still looking at color. You said Palin wasn't qualified, and then you said but. Well, we know what the but is. Oh, there you go, Eric and Randy. Thank you both for the calls. We're talking about whether you are you are feeling at loss now that the election is over. Some of these guys act like it hasn't even happened yet. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Tom Likas Show. 1 800 5800 Tom. We're trying to find out if the end of the election, the results now known, has caused you to feel like at a loss, like somebody died. It's Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing okay. All right, first off, you know, I'm not at all disappointed or saddened by the um, debates and that the election's over. If anything, I'm I'm happy. I'm glad that it's finally over because now people can, you know, finally get rest. But one of the things that, you, that you're going to see happen is that um, now that, you know, Obama is in office and that um, he got elected, you're going to see that all the people who are quite racist, they're not going to show out blatantly how racist they really are. I mean, already, you know, they're already talking about... Um, Oh, that he's a wild man for the job. We're all screwed. We're all going to be screwed in the near future. You know, none of that is going to happen at all. And, um, you know, besides that, we're happy that, you know, Bush, or another Bush, I should say, McCain, that he was not tossed in office because, let's face it, McCain was just a mimic of Bush. He was another clone, and he would have just been the same thing. And um, I want to know, like, how do you feel about the whole fact that um, these McCain fanatics are just pretty much acting a little bit crazy about the whole idea that an African-American man is going to run the country? Well, I, I don't know that they all feel that way. Uh, some of them probably do. Uh, but uh, I think they're more concerned about the fact that anybody who's not a Republican or a conservative got in. Yeah, that is true. That is true. All right, well, yeah, that's what I want to say. If you could take me out uh, like, like with a bomb and uh, with a bong, that'd be cool. A bomb and a bong. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here is John on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Here's Daniel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hi, son. It's been a while, sir. Glad you called back. Yes, I, I've missed you so much. It's been about six months. Uh -huh. But um, I w correct me if I'm wrong on anything that I say. Now you have the. You're my father, so you have the any, any chance you want. You step right in. And correct your boy. All right. Um, the majority of Bush's cabinet right now, are they not Democrat? No. From everything that I've heard and that, everything that I've followed, I thought they, I, I assumed that, me specifically, I, that's the way I assumed it, and that he had to actually go through them to get anything done. I mean, it's not fully. I think we're losing that connection. Wow. But no, that's not true. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I guess my take on the my feelings after the election are, you know, I'm glad it's over for the first, the first thing, but uh, I guess mostly what I hear is uh, time of the black people, uh, you know, people stepping forward and saying it's, it's our time to come out, and I think that that's uh, the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. 
mostly because I think that, uh, you know, the fact that Obama's black is a benign issue. I think that, uh, okay, he's been elected, the people have spoken, he's now got his opportunity to to do good things, whatever he wants to do, you know, great. But, uh, you know, time of the black people, I think, is ridiculous, because overall, what is he going to do that's going to benefit black people? I don't, I don't see, you know, I think everybody is, you know, we're all American, we're all in this together. And, uh, well, that's true. I don't like that attitude that he's going to come in there and change things, and I honestly don't think that's his agenda. Well, but, I think uh, his agenda is to change things, but I don't think the changes are going to be as radical as the paranoid conservatives seem to think. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that either. But uh, I also don't think that he's his, you know, he's going to change things on behalf of black people. I think he's, you know, I think his goal is on half on behalf of the American people, not. Not not on race, and I think that for people to keep pulling, bringing that up, it seems like it's coming from. It seems like the race card keeps being brought up by black people, not by, uh, not by the uh, conservatives for the most part. Yeah, well, um, you know, I'm, I'm, for me, I'm just glad to hear the end of all of the rumors and the wild accusations people were making on the radio. I mean, now it's uh, time to put up a shut up for Barack Obama. And um, I voted for Obama, and I hope he does a great job because uh, yeah, we need someone to do a great job. Well, I agree with you 110%, Tom. Can you take me out old school? Yes, yes, I can. one 800 tom that's our telephone number. Here is John on the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas. Yes, sir. How are you? Great. Well, I'm a uh, Canadian. But I've been living down here in the U.S. Uh, 10 years now. And I just cannot believe that, I don't know the exact number, what, 46 million people still voted for McCain? I don't remember the number, but it's something like that, yeah. I, I mean, it's just it, it just blows my mind that so many Americans would still vote for John McCain and Sarah Palin. It, it would just have been a disaster and if you look around the entire world how many people supported obama i i just it, it just kills me well uh it kills you that people supported obama or what what kills you it kills me that people would actually still vote for john mccain and sarah palin you know as many people i mean it was a landslide but it, it should have been it, it, it should have been far, far more than that. Well, got to remember, there's a lot of people out there who, uh, you know, see themselves as Republicans and conservatives first. And they say, they you know, McCain's slogan was country first, but that was never true. Just all the all the evangelicals and the rich right-wing wackos. And, I mean, where is, it, you know, where is this country going to go? You know, if we would have kept having a Republican Party in office? Ugh. Well, we're about to find out. Davis in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Davis. Uh, you know, I think I've been through through uh, a few elections, and always when the you know president elect is uh, you know wins the election, uh, you know definitely you know it falls off to the attention. But I think uh, in this one here, I am paying more attention to. Uh, the selections that are being made and and uh, and what's going on, uh, as I think a lot of other people are going to be, you know, not as engrossed as they were a week ago for sure. But uh, I think negatively, people are waiting for that slip up. You know, they're always going to be looking at them and waiting for that one slip up so they can, you know, point at. You know, at Obama and say, "Aha! I told you that a black man couldn't do it," or or whatever. Okay, I do. But not only that, I think a lot of people who supported Obama are are going to be disappointed simply because, you know, we've been sold the uh, into believing that this guy is the second coming. I think, I think there's very few people who could live up to the hype of anybody. Well, yeah, you know, and, and we have put a lot of hype on it for sure, and and uh, you know, the caller two two callers ago that was talking about as far as you know, black people, uh, you know, change. I mean, I, I think what your point was that you know he's not promising change. I think what black people are experiencing is you know just to, to see someone of their race rise to such a power that you know if they just 
you know, assert themselves, if they do what's right, if they go to school and get a job, and, and just like everyone else that's white, black, or whatever, that they can achieve things that before they, they haven't been able to, or they feel that they haven't been able to. They, they feel they've been put down or, or, or whatever. Well, we're going to find out now. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. I'm trying to find out if you are bereft now that the election is over. The election is over. Obama won. Now, how do you feel? Are you sad? Do you feel like you you miss out on what was going on before? Has anybody seen John Stewart since last Wednesday? <laughs> For example, Desiree on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Um, I'm calling for two reasons. One reason is because I'm African-American, and I wanted to clear up the misconception that we're excited about Obama being elected because we feel that we're going to get some kind of special treatment that's entirely incorrect. I'm, I'm happy that he is African-American, and that, and, and I'm happy about that because, again, based on the history and how African-Americans have been treated in the, in, in, in the past, but, of course, we're all Americans, and I don't think maybe a few, but overall, that we're just simply excited because, um, again, of how we were treated in the past, but we're all Americans, and not, we don't, we're not looking for any special treatment or anything like that. I'm excited as, um, as I was when he was elected. I'm still excited because, to be honest, um, prior to him coming on the scene, I was never into politics, just as you said, women typically are not. I wasn't. Now I'm, like, looking at everything from Lou Dobbs to Anderson Cooper to... Uh, everyone, everything I can get my hands on every day. I'm totally listening for any little tidbit of information about what's going on, and I can't wait till he's um, till inauguration so I can, you know, find out more about what he's going to do. But no, we don't expect any kind of special treatment or anything like that. Do you miss the election? Oh yes, it was very. Uh, it was uh, yes. I was excited. My husband was excited. Yes, I was watching it. I, I've been watching it for the last what year, following every tidbit from even Limbaugh. Everything that has to do, any anything from positive positive words to negative words. Anything I just wanted to just hear everything what people were saying. I, I'm still excited about it. I'm trying to get home now so I can watch the news. <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, I've never been like this ever. Uh, Never. I've never been like this until he came on the scene, and now I cannot get enough of it. It's, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm just so excited. I want to know every, any any little terms, I'm not, terms I wasn't even familiar with, like GOP and all these terms. I'm trying to look them up too. What does that mean? And uh, just everything. I just want to learn more now because he's on the scene, I must admit. Look at you. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 The Tom like it show. From Hollywood. I'm Tom Likas at one 800 500 tom Here we are at the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had. We take more calls than ever. Faster. We just rip them through them. Trying to find out if the week after Election Day you're feeling bereft about the end of the election. No, you got nothing to pay attention to. Nothing to wake up and read about it anymore. All right? Lori on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. You. Great. I am. Uh, I'm one of your big girl friends, so um, yeah, I love you a lot. And uh, pardon me if I, I'm really nervous. I'm so excited to be talking to you right now. Well, that's okay. Um. Oh, sorry. Um. I just. I uh, as soon as I voted for Obama, I voted for Obama like many people because I thought you know he is going to bring change. But then as soon as I did. I was very worried because a lot of the things I voted, uh, a lot of the things he's about, I'm not necessarily agreeing with, like universal health care. I feel like on paper, that's a great idea, but it, like the government runs the DMV and look how great that is. So I feel, I'm worried about what, what that's going to entail. And I just wondering if you had any thoughts on that as well. Well, uh, I agree with you. The government can't run the DMV. The government can't run the post office. Uh, what are they going to do about health care? But if I can opt out of health care and uh, it is there for the people who need it and not for the people who don't, and if the people who use it are going to be paying into it, it's not just going to be a big subsidy or a big welfare program. 
Um, I think it's reasonable to have that program available. What I don't want to have happen is have happen what happens in places like England where, you know, if you want surgery, get in line. It's going to be fair and everyone's going to get it in the order. <laughs> like, like you know, your telephone call, the answer in the order in which it was received. No, 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 yeah. no. No, 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 no. If I want to go to the dentist, I can afford to go to whoever I want. I don't want that to ever change. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit about what worries me is that, you know, I mean, our uh, even though our health care isn't great, you know, our medical system is the best in the world. I mean, people are flown here for our treatment. And I just have a feeling that if it, if it becomes, you know, universal, we're going to lose that specialty. We're going to lose that edge. So that's just my fear. Well, I love you a lot, Tom, and I know that this is a crazy request, but you used to do a song that I heard once and I absolutely thought it was hilarious. It was called I Bone with a Condom, and I was just wondering if you had that, if you could play that. Uh, I, we must have played that one time. I don't remember playing it ever, but I know we don't have it. But, Lori, thank you. one eight hundred five eight hundred 5 800 tom that's our telephone number. How do you feel now that the election is over? Luis, on the Tom Likas show. How you doing, Tom? Great. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, now that I feel now, I just feel that we really have a lot of work to do. So we got to wait and see exactly how it goes out. But really, my opinion, well, I had a question for you. I uh, want to know your opinion on what do you think about the first black president coming from the Democratic Party? Me being from the South, I'm from Dallas, Texas. We uh, we know that Democrats have ran the South, and basically during the Civil War, it was the Democrats against the Republicans. Republicans freeing the slaves, Democrats in the South wanting the, first, the slaves to continue to go on. So how do you feel about the first black president coming from the Democratic Party? Well, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are very different uh, from what they were 150 years ago. Correct. Uh, Abraham Lincoln would never be accepted as a Republican today, and you know it. He wouldn't, but his ideas still were fundamentally there. His, I mean, his ideas are still there as Republicans now. Oh, I don't agree with that for one minute. Now, why would you say that, though? Uh, because if anybody wants to have slaves, I'd think it would be Republicans. But then, at the same time, who was the one that actually signed the Emancipation Proclamation? Well, but the, the point is, it was a different party back then. I mean, it had the same name. Right. But it was a different party. Right. I mean, Barry now, Goldwater was a different kind of a conservative Republican than people who call themselves conservatives today. Today, Barry Goldwater would be considered a, a liberal. Well, let's go. Let's let's fast forward a few years now. Go back to the civil rights movement uh, when Democratic leaders were basically running the Ku Klux Klan and the government at the same time. But, but that's that's over forty years ago. The you're you're making it seem like it's that long ago when it's really not that long but ago. But but again, you know, times do change. And by the way, I'm not a fan of either party. I I think they're both as corrupt oh. as the day is long. Oh, I'm, I'm an independent as well. It's just that in this certain election, I did find the lesser of two evils being Mr. John McCain. Well, <laughs> most people obviously did not agree with you. Right and, right, and and by the way, even if he had been the lesser of two evils, adding Sarah Palin made it a slam dunk. <laughs> I understand. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I wasn't too happy about that. But now, you voted for her anyway. I'm sorry? But you voted for her anyway. Now, in this certain election, I did vote for, for the politics because... No, now, you voted for people. No, okay. And the people you voted for included Sarah Palin. The, the main reason I did not want to vote for Barack Obama was the fact that he wanted to cut down missile defense and a lot of... I don't want to say take our aggression away, but take a lot of our uh, world clout away. I understand nobody likes us even at this point in time, but... Uh, we also instance, don't have the world clout that you think... I mean, right well, now, our military I mean, is stretched thin. It is stretched thin, but what would happen if we started getting rid of missile defense? You're basically saying that you you don't find the country's defense as a, as a major well, the issue. The president is not going to act uh, on his own. He's going to act with Congress. A Democratic Congress. Yeah, well, a Democratic majority, but uh, certainly not without filibusters and other maneuvers oh, that Republicans oh, have available to them. go on for hours, but... That's right. But it's our, it, it depends on... The Sometimes days. And and the way I see it in this certain election, Obama has such a personality about him and such such sway over people that I think that he was really going to pass a lot of the... Well, if people are court. unhappy with Obama, they'll do with Obama what they did with Bill Clinton in 1994, and they'll elect a bunch of Republicans to Congress to try to balance it out. If they like Obama, they may uh, increase the number of Democrats. Who knows?
Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Brett on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Brett. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Tom. Hi, Brett. <laughs> um, I appreciate you taking my call. Yes. The, the election that took place totally consumed my life. It was uh, something where I would, like, live and breathe it, and it got to the point where it drove my my wife and family, like, totally, like, you know, bizarre. It was really? Like, totally, yeah, it was just um, from CNN to NBC to MSNBC to to all these, you know, different uh, channels and Fox News, and it drove my, my wife nuts, and the kids were doing their homework late because of me. Now, after the fact... Um, you know, voted vote, pr predominantly uh, raised as a Republican, voter for Bush, and uh, this time around declined to state on my registration form. But I proudly voted for Obama. I think he's a human, and I think he's going to change this world like we've never seen before. Well, uh, again, we're, we're going to know that with time. On a, as someone who voted for Obama, I say it's too soon to tell. Right. We really don't know if he will or he won't. Right. Uh, it's just, just the, 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 not only the fact that he's an eloquent speaker, that he's an Ivy League uh, grad, just the fact that his, his poise, his manner, the way he spoke to the people directly at them, it, he just... Well, just um, because somebody has a good uh, style of speaking with people doesn't mean they're going to make a great president. You know what? But 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 you go in you go in knowing what we know right now with everyone. But we have a better feeling with this with, with this candidate. Well, we've had good feelings about lots of people. You know, uh, people had a good feeling about George Bush when they elected him. Yeah. So I, I was. I guess I was one of them. So uh, I can't really. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, you know what? I I, I hope in twenty in uh, two thousand twelve we have a president elect like us. Well, you couldn't because the president-elect uh, would uh, be replacing Barack Obama. And, you and, know, okay. and so that would mean he would have failed. I got you. Okay. You give that some thought. Amazing. Our email address. It's my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Our show streams live. At our website, blowmeuptom.com, all you do is click on the Listen Live button between 3 and 8 p.m. Pacific Time, and you it's listen. It's the Tom Likas Show.